Welcome back to SEN League's YouTube channel. I'm Charles Goodsir. I'm joined by Dominic Crenetti. Dom, how you going, Matt? I'm doing great. Obviously a man down, but it's a uh, two-man army we've got going now. So Yeah, man down. We won't mention his name because he's no longer with us, unfortunately. He's still alive, just... He's just not here. Say, he sounds like he's dead. He's still alive and well, good old Tommy. But Yeah, he's, he's just not here. But uh, So we had a look at the coaches, which coaches were under pressure. We're now going to have a look at uh, the teams, uh, where, where we expect the teams to finish this season, whether they'll rise sharp up the ladder, they'll stay about the same, or if they're going to fall off a cliff. Uh, so I think we should just get started. I think we're going to start from the bottom all the way up. So we're going to start with the West Tigers, who finished 17th last year. Back-to-back wooden spoons. Dom, do you see them uh, achieving the... The three peat that nobody wants. Um, as a Dragons fan, I mean, I know that these two teams played each other on Saturday night. It was probably a good performance from the Dragons, but it was absolutely abysmal from the Tigers. If we're talking in terms of this tier list, they can't. You can't really get worse than seventeenth, can you? No, that's what many people said uh, at the end of twenty twenty two. They said, "Oh, it can't Fair get any point. worse." And people point out, "Yes, it can. You can go one down." They yep. did that. I think they'll be better. I, I, I think yeah. they. I think Benji Marshall has one clear plan. I think all the changes made in the off season uh, at board level, whilst it's not stuff on the field, I think it's limiting all those distractions that we've come to to know and love. Depending on what side of the fence you sit on with the West Tigers, yep. I'm going to say they'll be better. That's not to say that they'll make the top eight or anything like that. I, I think they'll probably still be a bottom four side, but I think they'll win a couple more games. I think they'll look a little bit more structured and organized. I I have faith in Benji Marshall. I liked what I saw in that first trial against the Warriors. So I'm I'm going to put them in the will be better camp. Look, will be better if they finish 16th. Does that count? I I don't think that counts. If they finish 16th, that's about the same in my opinion. I I agree with that. So So you think they're 15th and above? I think so, yeah. Who's worse than them? The Dragons? I think the Dragons are worse than them. I, I have really... Uh, big worries about the Bulldogs, and I have big worries about the Canberra Raiders yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, you've been pretty vocal on that uh, anti-Canberra mm. uh, agenda you got going there. Look, I think we'll be better as well. I think 15th, you'd probably take it if you're a Tigers fan. So we'll put them in the uh, will be better category there. I reckon that's that's a fair spot for the Tigers. Now we can have a look at the team that finished 16th with five wins, 19 losses. That's the Dragons. I think a lot of people have the Dragons finishing as wooden spooners, including myself. But because they finished 16th, I'm going to say that's going to be about the same. Uh, I can see them maybe not avoiding the wooden spoon. I really liked what I saw from their attack uh, the other day or the other night against the Tigers in that trial match. I'm just worried that when it gets to the nitty-gritty of the season, when it gets to especially origin times, when Ben Hunt's not going to be there, a couple of injuries happen, maybe suspensions. How's this team going to function across 27 rounds of the home and away season? I don't think they have a lot of top end talent I think they're in a in a in a, in a, a season of hurt I think Shane Flanagan knows that I think this season's just going to be a write off it's just going to be about making sure it hasn't started yet I know <laughs> but, I, but I, I just have that feeling that making sure the structures are in place yep. sort of that first season like Cameron Sorrell the head of the Bulldogs just weeding out the players that are that, that you know aren't really going to be there the next season who aren't really pulling their weight so I think it's going to be a year of hurt for the Dragons I think they're going to win the wooden spoon but I don't think that's a reflection of the effort or anything like that. I think they'll try. I just don't think they have the cattle to do it. So I'm going to say they're going to be about the same. Yeah, I agree with you there. And you're completely right. I think you seen with the signing of Raymond Faitala Marin. I think he's a good NRL player, but no one else wanted him. And Shane Flanagan's probably recognised that once it comes to origin time, the injuries start, then you're really starting to dig deep into the youth players and some players that just aren't ready for the NRL. So Good signing there, along with Luciano Leilua. A bit more depth, a bit more, you know, oomph in the attack, especially in the pack, which we've needed. We've really missed since, I think, the heyday of Mary McGregor's reign in 2018-19 uh, when we'll two field goals off a prelim final. I've got to add there as a Dragons fan. But, yeah, I think best case for the Dragons will be around that Tigers 15 mark. I just it's It's got spoon ridden all over it, unfortunately. I think we might get two wins outside of the bike. Before the Tigers trial, I was not confident we could beat any other NRL side. But we've proven it. We've beaten an NRL side despite it being the Tigers. Yeah, I think they look better. But also, Dragons fans, just pump the brakes a little bit. I've, I've heard some Dragons fans say we're going to finish fourth, we're going to finish sixth, we'll oh, finish no in the top eight. or we'll finish the, Yeah, or we'll finish in the upper echelon of the of like the you know the teams that don't make it. Yeah. I think this is a clear bottom four team. Yeah. And that's no disrespect to any, anyone on the Dragons team. I yeah. just think this team's going through... A bridging period at the moment. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So we're going. So we're going about the same. About the same. Yeah. Shout out to my dad as well because he thinks that Shane Flanagan's going to lead the Dragons to a top eight finish. Uh, I don't know if he's taking the piss or not. Genuinely, but he said it a lot. So, 
Yeah, not not making the top eight. Bottom four seems just about right. I like it. And now we go on to the Bulldogs. Now, it's an interesting case, this one. So Cameron Serraldo entered last season as the hottest rookie coach, I, I think, in my memory of following the National Rugby League. They finished with seven wins, 17 losses. So, But they got more, more wins than the Dragons and the Tigers. The only thing that had the worst defense in the competition. And Cameron Serraldo was lauded for the fact that he was a defensive-minded coach. Uh, I think... My Newcastle Knights put, what, 100, 100 plus points on the Magic Grid, only conceded the, the one or two tries in the end. I, I'm i really unsure of the Bulldogs this season. I think they'll be about the same. I really don't see them improving that much. I know they've signed Stephen Crichton, and they've signed a lot of, you know, Blake Taff, Kurt Mann, uh, Drew Hutchison. They've got Toby Sexton in the halves. I know they got him as a mid-season recruit last year, but it's a lot of good without great, with the exception of Stephen Crichton. And I think making Stephen Crichton the captain, mm-hmm. I'm a bit unsure. He hasn't played a game yet. He's still very young. He doesn't scream leadership to me, especially in the centres as well, where they don't really touch the ball that often. I've heard people say Josh had a car, but I don't know why you'd make a winger y- your captain. Yeah. I I just think there's a lot of question marks and there's a lot of pressure going for the ball. So there's a lot more expectation now, now that Sorrell has had another season under his belt. So I'm going to go about the same, I think. I, I don't see this team moving outside of the bottom four. Yeah, I've got to agree with you there. Uh, Bulldogs fans are really optimistic about this season. They always are. Yeah, they The last are, 10 yeah, years they have been. And you've you got to understand it on, on some level because they've made some really big signings and they've got NRL quality players everywhere. But I think their roster is still a bit too top heavy. Uh, spines just doesn't, doesn't do it for me, to be honest. Like... Blake Taft's great. Uh, I think Reid Marnie's the only one there that I'd really be confident in, you know, starting in any other NRL team. The rest, yeah, you look at Taft last year. I mean, I think he probably could have cracked that Rabbitohs team yeah, as a seven. Shout out Lockie Elias. But uh, that's a story for another day. Bulldogs, it's a really tough one. You could see them probably pushing maybe that 12th range on a, on a good day. You know, they need a lot of things to fall their way. But I think the inexperience, they're going to lose a decent amount of players to Origin as well. I think Crichton... Maybe not Addo Car, but yeah, that, and you know, you lose your captain who's, you know, been there for 10 games. He goes, All right, see you, boys. I'm going to a uh, Coogee Hotel, and hang out with the lads in uh, Blues Camp. So, Bulldogs, about the same. I could see them going worse. And I think, I think, best case scenario for me, yeah. I think, yeah, like 10th or 11th. And I can't say that happening, yeah. but I just trying to be realistic. And I just, I, I think depth can only get you so far. You sort yeah. of need that talent. And I think they've recruited well for <laughs> sort of plugging the gaps that we also obviously saw yeah, last yeah. year with their defence, yeah. but I, I still think bottom four. Yeah, so about the same. And I think my hot take, which I'm going to do on our sen.com.au's uh, NRL predictions, uh, my one hot take, Cameron Serraldo, gone. Mm. Gone by game three of Origin. I think Gus is going to say, sorry, mate, we've got the wrong Penrith assistant. You've mixed the contracts up. We should have got Andrew Webster. And... Uh, I don't know who's going to coach the dogs after that. Nice. I like that. Jot down your receipts, everybody. Dominic Kennedy, Cameron Sato, gone. 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 Gold Coast Titans. Uh, eight wins, one draw, 15 losses, uh, finishing 14th last season. Do you want to kick off uh, this one, Dom? Yeah, I think the Titans have been the kind of the hot topic of the, the offseason. You've got Desi coming in. You've got the evolution of David Fafita, Tina Fasua Ma'alawi. Great, great pronunciation there. I'll give myself a pat on the back for that. Um, you know, Kieran Foran, if he can stay fit, AJ Brimson going into the centers, Jaden Campbell looks great at fullback. I th- don't think sharp rises because I can still see them missing the eight because this is another team that's going to get absolutely demolished by origin. You lose Tino and Dave Fafita, two of your best players are gone. Uh, you got a few injury prone players, including Kieran Foran. Um, I think they'll be better. So I could definitely see this team going on a West Tigers run and finishing ninth. Yeah, I've I've got them as uh, sharp risers, but I think uh, I'll agree with you. I think we'll put them in the will be better yeah. category. I, I see them making top eight. I see them okay. finishing seventh or eight. Yeah. I think Desi Hasler is such a good coach, and I think they did something really smart. And not to say that sacking any coach is smart. Obviously, it's someone's job, but I think they were ruthless about it. They yeah. said, okay, it's obviously not working with Justin Holbrook. Let's secretly go out. They didn't publicize it at all. Yeah. They worked diligently behind the scenes, targeted Desi Hasler, said, this is our guy. They got him, and I think now's the time for the Titans to finally deliver on so much promise they've had for so years. They've got the talent. You've just mentioned so many names that yeah. are playing Queensland for Queensland, also just rep football for Australia as well, yep. and for other nations too. So I, I'm I'm bullish on the Titans this season. I don't think they'll you know have a barnstorming run like the Warriors or something that we saw in 2023, where they make top four. I think they'll finish seventh or eighth. Mm-hmm. 
but I'm happy to put them in the will be better category. Yeah, I think the sharp riser, you'd probably have to consider them like a lock for the top eight. Like probably even top six side, right? Like yeah, and they're definitely the not a lock. Yeah, 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 Definitely not a yeah. lock. So yeah. I'm, I'm happy for the Titans to be, uh, be in the will be better category. New kids on the block, the Dolphins. Uh, pretty impressive uh, start to last yep. season, uh, to life in the NRL. Tape it away, predictably. Uh, nine wins, 15 losses. 15 losses seems like a lot for a team that uh, had every single person supporting them as their second favorite team. <laughs> Um, the Dolphins, uh, they've recruited excellently. Herbie Farnworth is an absolute gun, um, and so is Thomas Flogler as well. Some concerns about Tom Gilbert with that possible yeah, ACL. Right. At the time yeah. of recording this, we don't know if it's an ACL. I think we're pretty certain it will be. It doesn't look great. Yeah. Um, so obviously, death is going to be another issue this season, but I think they've now they've set up a really good base and foundation. They've recruited some star talent as well. Like I yes. said, Herbie Farnworth, I think, could be the best center of the competition by the end of the year. I'm going to go will be better, but that's not to say they're going to be in the top eight. I think they're going to be around that maybe 7 to 12 range. I could see them playing in the top eight. I'll probably have them just outside, but I think that's my range. So I'm going to say will be better. It's it's a really strange uh, predicament that a lot of these clubs are in because two of their best players are going to be going for origin again, Flegler and Hammer. Hammer's proved mm. himself to be one of the best origin performers in recent years. He's gone. And then, you know, maybe Kafusi gets a recall. Tom Gilbert was there last year. Obviously, might not play this year. Herbie is kind of in the same scenario that Stephen Crichton is, where it's like how much impact can a center have if he's not getting the right balls or close to the line? They're not feeding him. They don't put him with the right winger. It takes a while to adjust. I think he'll be just fine. But, yeah, it's it's a real tough one. Wayne Bennett, obviously, in his last season, how much effort. Will the boys, you know, are they going to be, are they, are they going to get up for Wayne in his last season, try and make finals, right? A, a last dance, perhaps? The last dance with Wayne Bennett, even though he'll, pr- I, I think he'll be coaching again in 2025. So. I think, I think he'll coach until the day he dies, Wayne Bennett. <laughs> I think it's, it's just impossible for him not to be coaching in some capacity. Yeah, yeah, that's a fair point. No, I agree with you. We'll be better, but yeah, I struggled. I honestly, I struggle to see this team make the top eight. A lot, a lot of things need to fall in their favor and. They need to be consistent. They were a great uh, come from behind team last year, but I mean, how how much longer can you have these poor first halves and just keep coming back in the second? Yeah, I, I agree with you there. So I think we're both in consensus. Will be better, yes, but probably won't play finals. Shout out Gold Coast Titans. The Manly Seagulls. Now the Manly Seagulls are for me a sharp riser. I I, I think that look last year was a bit of a write off considering Tom Trevojevic was injured for most of it. I think they've recruited well again. I really like the signing of Luke Brooks. I know he didn't star at the West Tigers, but I think he had a lot of pressure on his shoulders solely as well. Um, fairly or unfairly, you can be the judge, but I think going to a club like Manly, being playing second fiddle to a guy like DC, who is just aging like fine wine, I think we'll look back on his career and he'll be one of the best halfbacks in the NRL ever. One of the best halfbacks for Manly, one of the best halfbacks for Queensland, I think. I really rate DC. The question is, can they get the most out of their top-end talent? Can they stay on the park for long enough? Mm. Wouldn't be surprised if maybe uh, Tom Trevojevic doesn't play Origin this year, depending on how the yeah. Seagulls are going and whether or not he wants to sort of, I don't want to say pull a Callum Pong because that was more just to protect his yeah. health, but yeah. just say, look, things are going really well. I want to win a premiership mm-hmm. for, for this club. And I, I just think there's so much hype around this team that I think more so than anything, they... For me, they need to be sharp risers rather than just sort of will be better. I think they need to sort of push their way up and compete for that top four. I don't think they'll finish top four, maybe fifth or sixth, in that upper echelon of the the top eight teams or the bottom half of the top eight. Uh, so I'm going to go sharp risers for Manly. What do you recommend? Yeah, I'll back you there. I think we can – we can uh, like, oh, this is the problem with Manly. Every single conversation starts with if Tom Trevojevic. It, it starts and ends with Turbo, yeah, basically. Yeah. It starts and ends with him, and it's it's pretty unfair on him, to be honest, to have the the weight of a club season on your shoulders. I think it's a bit of a... It's 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 a bit of a, like, indictment into what Manly have got themselves into recruitment-wise. But they've kind of fixed it. They've patched those holes a little bit, and you, you see when he's injured, they, they played a bit better at the back end of last year. So there'll be sharp risers for me, for sure. The problem for me, I see, is that origin period again, because... It impacts so many This is what I see yeah. happening, right? I think Madge has kind of told Teddy, you're not, you, unless you're the best player in the world, the first 10 games of the season, you're not playing Origin. That leaves the New South Wales number one jersey up for grabs, and that's Tommy's to take, right? Dylan Edwards. That's Tommy's to take. All right, Tommy's to take. I don't, I don't think Madge, you know, 
first year in the job, he's going to go Dylan Edwards unproven. At or maybe Scott level. Drinkwater. Maybe a bolt. Yeah, like maybe. That. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Depends how the Cowboys. This is for. This sounds yeah. like a future video dump that we can prepare for the uh, the ju- June, July, May. It's never too early to start Origin team talk. Too early but, Origin um, predictions. Look, I think shout out to my my man Fletch. Right, Fletch. After I came back from Manly Media Day, he said, "What are you feeling? You feeling top eight vibes?" And after thinking about it, I thought, "Yeah, they act like everyone seemed really happy. There was a good vibe at Brookvale Oval. There's a new kind of uh, corporate center they got open there. They're starting to refurbish the place, so it looks a bit better. It's got a new center of excellence as well. Yeah, Manly top six. Lock it in. They'll be sharp risers." Now the Cowboys. The Cowboys coming off a great 2022 season where they sort of shocked the competition, sort of fell away in the pack a little bit in 2023, largely I think due to a lot of their players who sort of emerged as these stars, these really young stars, they got origin call-ups, they got international call-ups at the World Cup as well. Impact pre-season, I don't think that really helped matters. They started slow, then they went on this great run and then faded away late again to miss out on the top eight. I'm really big on the Cowboys. I think the Cowboys will finish in the top four. I think they've got the, arguably the most talented roster in the entire competition. I think even more talented than the Broncos as well. I think they'll finish top four. You can shoot me down all you like. I just have this feeling that this team had this was the the team we saw twenty twenty three was not the team that uh, they have basically. I think last year was a bit of an aberration. Uh, progress is never linear, so yep. I think top. I think that twenty twenty two season was the real Cowboys. I think they have a lot of their stars back on the field as well. I think Scott Drinkwater is one of the most underrated players in the competition. I think he's taken that mantle from Dylan Edwards. I think yeah, Dylan yeah. Edwards is now properly rated. Yeah. I think now Scott Water, Scott Drinkwater <laughs> comes in uh, as that most underrated player. So I have this team finishing at least fourth. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they finished second. I really wouldn't. I don't think they're a minor premiership winning team. I think second's their ceiling. But I think fourth is, is where they should be aiming. Yeah, unfortunately, I just don't share your Cowboys' optimism. I think they'll, I think they'll be a great team. I think uh, another team we can lock into the top six. I think th- this season's going to go one of two ways. They'll have the exact same season as last year, or they'll be towards that uh, upper, maybe top five. Uh, just depends on how the other teams above them react. You know, the Warriors and Melbourne, a few other teams like that. Are they up in that echelon of the top four last year? Personally, I don't see it, and I think there's one main reason I don't. Re- I don't like calling out players individually, but I think it falls on Chad Townsend. I think he plays such a crucial role big, in that. Yeah, big Chad Townsend. Oh, guy. big, 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 big Chad big Townsend. Townsend guy. Yeah, yeah. Big tier list uh, SEN League YouTube guy. I am. Uh, Chad Townsend. I think he ne- he is not necessarily the X factor, but he's one of the most important players because that seven jersey so important for the Cowboys to free up Tom Dearden. Right when Tom Dearden has someone looking after all the nitty gritty of getting through their sets and finding players. Then Tom Dearden's at his best. That's when, you know, we've got Sat saying he can win the Dally M, and that is all dependent on Chad Townsend. So does he have another season in him? That's my big question. And if he does, I can see them finishing top two. But right now, I just think he's a little bit too inconsistent. You've got a few youngsters knocking on the door for his jersey. Fletcher's already called it that he's going to get the sack, uh, Chad Townsend, midway through the season. So I think top six, I, I just can't say sharp rises. I think they'll be better, though, definitely. Yeah, I, I think I'm happy to put them in the will be better category. I think something that's also going slightly under the radar is uh, they've got new captains as well. So they've got Tommy exactly, Dearden yeah, and yeah. Ruben Cotter as the captains, which I think are, are great yeah. selections. I think uh, Tamalolo and Townsend yeah. stepping aside. Look, look, they're big, selfless guys. You know, Chad Townsend, big, big into his selfless big, acts. Big captaincy guys. Big, big captaincy guy. Um, <sighs> So I think they're sort of ushering a new age. I think they weren't happy with last season. I think Todd Payton isn't a guy to sort of just let things go. I think he saw that last season was terrible. Yeah, they, 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 yeah, they finished. They finished a couple. Uh, they finished a game outside the the top eight. But they were never in it. They, they finished it with a twelve and twelve record. They were in it mm. sort of, mm. but they never really sort of stamped their authorities. Yes, we are a top yeah. eight team. I know Vossi's big on them as well. I'm really big on them. I think they've just. They've got that exciting brand, similar to the Broncos, where they've yep. got a lot of speed, a lot of talent uh, across the ball. So, uh, yeah, I think we're in consensus. We'll be better. Well, no, we can put them in the sharp risers because where they were, so what, they... They, they, f- they finished 11th. Are yeah. we happy to go sharp risers? Because if they finish in six positions... Yeah, further, um, yeah. yeah, all right. Uh, we can Cows. put them in sharp risers. Sharp risers. Yeah, I like talk it. me into it. I'll just, I've just contradicted everything I said. What am I doing? Now, the Eels. Eels are a fascinating one, and Eels fans, please don't shoot us down. I've seen this so many times, Dom. Yeah. You, you as well. Whenever we post something on SEN League, SEN 1170, any sort of... 
I, I don't even want to say negative Eels rhetoric, but just tempering expectations about the Eels for this season, thinking, look, look, they've got good players, but yeah. they don't necessarily rival like the talent across the park of the Panthers or the yeah. Broncos, the Warriors even as well. And everyone, Eels fans get so defensive Massive about fan everything. I, I just don't yeah. get it. Take off your goggles for a minute, your bias goggles, yeah. and just listen to what we're saying. We're not, we don't hate the eels. We're just calling it how we see it. And on that note, Dom, I'd like you to start with this one. Yeah, um, honestly, I think they'll be about the same. There's some people saying that they're going to fall down to like the bottom four. That's a bit overkill. They've got on paper one of the best packs in the league. Even if it's aging, like you know, Junior Barlow and Regan Campbell Gillard as a front row pairing is incredible, right? They've got depth in the forward pack. It's their back line that's concerning, right? And especially Origin. If Mitch Moses is a chance this year, they could be really, really depleted as well. I feel like I'm a broken record just saying that because Origin is going to deplete a lot of these sides. I could see the Eels finishing in the top eight. They need a lot from those young uh, backs that they've got in. And, you know, maybe like a mid-season signing. Hello, Zach Lomax. Shane Flanagan's just like literally like got him like that, ready to just royal rumble over the top rope, get him out of the club. Parramatta needs someone like that. And then I think we can start getting into the will be better category, but about the same, like top eight is probably not a stretch, but it, it, they need everyone at their best to finish in that seven to six region. So I, I think about the same. Yeah. I think at their absolute best with everything going right for them, with, win a with all their, no, not even, <laughs> not even. I, th- I think they could at their, at their best. I think at, at all their players at their very best, Brad Arthur at his very best. Yep. I think the best this this team can do is sixth. Wow. I, I think they've that's exhausted massive. everything they can out of this roster. I think Clint Gutherson is an excellent leader yep. who makes up for, I think, maybe, I would I don't want to say lack of talent because no. he doesn't have a lack of talent at all, but he makes up for what he lacks from other fullbacks, for like the, your Kalen Pongers, your yeah. Reese Walshers. He makes up with loads of effort. He's the biggest effort player in the competition, I think. I owe Mitch yep. Moses a massive apology. I said last year, yeah, I don't, I don't want him yep. anywhere near my New South Wales team. Yep. He was probably the best player out of for New South Wales out of all three games. I know yep. he didn't play the first game, but I think he was great game two and game yep. three. Yep. I think their forward pack, whilst aging, is still good. I just don't see where the, and I hate to use this word, but X factor comes yeah, from. Yeah, no, no. That's and fair. it's the biggest knock against the Eels. And you look at the Panthers, mm. it's Nathan Cleary. Look at the Broncos, Reese Walsh, Selwyn Cobbo, Adam Reynolds to some extent. Jordan Rickey as well, I think, is really, is really great. I've got stars across the field. The Warriors, obviously, Roger Tuvasa, Shek coming yeah. back. I think Chance Nickel Klook start has, has made that obvious. The Knights, Kalen Ponga is the standout. But then you've also got a guy like Bradman Best coming yeah, through. That's fair. Yeah. The Sharks, which I still kind of had the same knock about the Sharks of the Eels. You've got Nico Hines there as well. And then you've also got Anafinua Blake coming through. Roosters, well, you know, they just... I won't, me- I won't mention that part there's about the sombrero. Roosters, but yeah, there's uh, Sombrero in the, in the, in the studio yeah. here. Um, I just think the Eels, where is your X-Factor guy? I think Mitch Moses and Clint Gutherson are very, very, very yeah. good players. So I'm going to go about the same Yeah. around that eight to 11th bracket. Okay. I, I can see that, but I want to counteract your X factor thing a little bit. Mm. And I think that's where someone like Dylan Brown comes into play. I think Dylan Brown could be that X factor. Like obviously he had the, he had the, the off the field stuff last year, which you'd safe to say is put, put him behind him. Now he's on big money. He needs to start proving that he's worth it. He's a great player. I think, I think he could be that. And then you've got other players as well. You got Ryan Madison as well, who can just absolutely break a game like that. Junior Barlow, Regan Campbell Gillard, as I mentioned before, two of the best forwards in the league. I mean, Jermaine Hopgood, like, he was in the Queensland extended squad last year. He could be that X factor. So I think they can find it. But, yeah, honestly, if everything goes right, a few teams are injured, Parramatta could go all the way. It's just like a 1% chance. But they could, in my opinion. There, there's a there's a minute possibility they could. I, th- I think all the, the players you mentioned are very, 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 very good players yes. at their absolute best. I just don't see so they could take them that being one. genuine match. Dylan Brown's only, what, like 23, 24. He's, he hasn't even hit his proper prime yet, right? That's, I mean... That's very true. Yeah, that's so very true. But I think I think we're both yeah, in agreement about, about, about the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. I yeah. cannot wait for all the comments on this video saying we know nothing about league. Okay, now the Rabbitohs. Rabbitohs, yep. man, they're premiership favourites at midway through the year. They were 8-3. and three. They then fell to 12-12 12 and 12 in hilarious... I won't say hilarious fashion. That was pretty funny. Uh, look, it was it, look pretty as, funny. A, as a... Yeah. As a... Non Rabbitohs fan, it was pretty funny seeing to absolutely capitulate and just implode. 
I think, look, I'm going to have them in the will be better uh, category because I think they will return to the top eight with it. But here's the thing. They have to be better. They're too good. Yeah, they have they're, to be. They're yeah. too good to should miss out. Another, get, we should put another tier in there. Have to be better. I agree. They have to be better. Yeah. I know I would put Manly in that category as well. They have to be better. Yeah. Because for the talent on that roster, for them to miss out on the finals in the fashion they did is embarrassing. Yeah. And I think they know that. Yep. So I think they will be better. They have to be better and they must be better. I'm gonna I'm not gonna say top four, because I still think there are some question marks about the Rabbitohs, about the resilience, but finals for sure. See, I I disagree with that. I think they are gonna be top four. I think adding Jack Wyden's like massive. I think that's one of the biggest signings that we've seen. I think in this in this kind of free agency window, you could talk about a few other players, Cryden and Herbie, but I mentioned that before. How much impact can those guys have? Jack Wyden's Ben, you know, played Origin, uh, Benning Grand Finals. I know Stephen Crichton's done the same thing, but Jack Wyden was playing six for a lot of those games, right? So the Rabbitohs, they've got heaps of depth. They've got some great youngsters coming through as well. Campbell Graham's going to be a big, big, uh, big miss for them. Like, I can't understand how big of a miss. But they, again, they've got depth there. Like, you know, Tass and Wyden will fill those holes pretty good. Obviously, not you can't you can't replace Campbell Graham what he brings to the Rabbitohs. But, yeah, they've got great depth. I think just... Just having Wyden there might bring up Latrell and Cody Walker. They seem to be pretty good friends off the field. So just having them around the club could boost that morale up a little bit. It would just be interesting to see if the lads get up for Jason Demetrio or not. I think it's a big season for him. Uh, if if he doesn't get to that, you know, if they're not in like a guaranteed top six with 10 rounds to go, you've really got to start being worried about them. But I think they're going to be top four most of the season. I think you start going 10 rounds to go, you'll start looking at finals matchups and who they're going to play. So... I'm going to disagree. I think they're going to be sharp risers. Okay. I, I like it. Um, it. You can put them in the sharp risers. Category, Thank you. Right? I appreciate that. All right. Dom, this one I don't think should take too long. Uh, this is probably my, my biggest, well, not my biggest hot take, but the thing that I'm championing the most heading into yeah. this season is that I think the Canberra Raiders are going to fall off the cliff. And it's really no fault of any of their players or anything like that. I just think Jack Wyden is a massive loss. Yeah. I think they overachieved last season. They they, yeah. they made the, They made the finals. 13 wins, 11 losses, 137-point differential. Yeah. Ignore the wins and losses. When you look at a team's negative point differential and it's that much in the red, then it's pretty clear that they've got quite a few issues. I think they yeah. lucked into the finals last year. They yeah. they rode their luck, almost toppling the Knights in that epic elimination final. But I think this is the year where sort of reality comes back to bite them a little bit. Yeah. I think they'll be good. They'll be competitive. It's not like they'll be like a, a failure of a team. But I just think they're... they're about to face a massive drop. Yeah. And I just don't know who steps up in their place. So from eighth, I'm going to say they'll probably finish bottom four. Okay. Uh, so I'm going, they're going to fall off a cliff. Yeah, not going to argue with you there much. But I will say in Canberra's defense, this is a bit of a bridging year. I mean, Ricky Stewart's retiring. Jordan Rappiner at the end of the year has been pretty open about that. And Elliot Whitehead as well, two of the senior players there. But, I mean, this is the year where you've got to expect Joe Tarpin is always going to be their best player, I think. But this is the year where you need Hudson Young, Corey Horsburgh to kind of step up and be alongside Josh Papali'i and be like, this is our team now. Like, you guys can help us get there. But 2025, this is going to be the Hudson Young and Corey Horsburgh experience. And then they've got some decent depth. They've got uh, Chevy Stewart looks like a pretty promising prospect as well. Uh, even Xavier Savage could be one of the fastest wingers we've ever seen in our history. Not much more on the Raiders. I think bottom four as well. Uh, but 2025, I expect a massive, massive improvement from them. I, I agree with that as well. Yeah. Not to be poo by any Raiders fans. I think this is just the one-year dip. Yeah. And then I think once you get, uh, like, you know, Xavier Savage, like you said, yeah. just another year, a little bit more experience, and I think they'll be all the better for it. And I think they'll have some good games here and there. They'll have some green shirts as well. So that would be positive to see. Now let's go on to the Roosters, who finished seventh last season. Yep. Very scratchy. Don't know how they made the finals, but they did. They won a final as yep. well against the Sharks, that thriller at Shark Park in the first week of the finals. I know they've recruited well. I know they've got Spencer Lenu and blokes like Dominic Young. I know where this is going. But I just think the likes of James Tedesco is sort of stalling a little bit. Luke Keir didn't have a great year last year. Uh, they dropped Sam Walker. Don't do he it. then got injured. Don't do it. I've got them about the same. Oh, <laughs> look, I don't like the Roosters as a club, personally, as a Dragons mm. fan. But you've got to respect that this is, I think, on par, the second best roster in the NRL. Like, this team has literally players coming out of their ass. Like, they have forwards everywhere. This is ridiculous. This is one of the most stacked teams I've seen. Penrith are the best team just because of the contingency of that team, right? And they've got some of the best players in the league. But depth-wise, no one matches the Roosters. They're going to be top three 
it'll be, in my opinion, it'll be uh, Penrith, Brisbane locked for that top two. And then it'll be a mix between Warriors, Storm, Roosters, Rabbitohs for those next two spots. And the Roosters, I think, would be the favorite out of that next group to finish third or fourth, in my opinion. Just like Spencer Lenny off the bench. Like he, he was, he's been the best bench player, arguably, the last three seasons for the team that's won the league the last three years. You add that to your team, he will take over from Jared next year. You got Dom Young, like the, I think the best winger in the league as well. Tedesco calls up Madge and says, listen, Uncle Nick's telling me I've got to quit. I'm quitting Origin. I mean, Luke Keery and Walker aren't getting to Origin. You're going to have most of your team there. Surely he's like halfway out the door anyway. That's all well and good, but I think it comes down to the same problem is that uh, rugby league is a game played on the field and not on paper. That's a good point. I, I think last year exposed some really bad problems with their attack. Yeah, They looked very clunky. They had all these stars on the field, but didn't really know how to use them. And I just don't see how buying a whole bunch of players, a bunch of new players addresses that either. You, if, if they find a way to click, then I completely agree with what you're saying. Yeah. I think they're easily like one of the best teams in the competition will be in that top three yeah. and with Panthers, Broncos and, and Roosters. But I just, I'm just not sure. I, they're not a good starting team. Yep. Going out of Vegas, I don't think is the great greatest way to start your season, personally, when yeah, you've got a history of, of bad starts. Yep. I think they'll be about the same, which is to say that they'll be in the top eight. I think they'll be in it, and they'll be in that top eight for most of the season. I don't think it will yep. be a case of last yeah, season yeah, yeah, where yeah. they yeah. just went on this run, came out of nowhere and finished yep. seventh. But I I just have some really big question marks over their attack. So I'm I'm thinking about the same. Yeah, I, I just think they'll be better. I think, like, even if they're on that, right, if they're in the top mm. eight for most of the season, then they're going to be better. So I think they're in the will be better category. I'm, I'm happy for yeah. you to put them in the in the yeah. will be better category. The Sharks. Sharks are an interesting one. I'm I'm, I'm going to defer to you on this one to start, Dom, because oh, I'm just, I'm just really fan. unsure of, of, of where to put this team. Yeah. Sharks, Sharks, Sharks. Great regular season team. Like, there's no way around it. I think uh, this is my bad for not mentioning them in that second tier below Penrith and Brisbane because in the regular season, they genuinely are one of the best teams going around. So I think they'll be about the same, but that's not that's not a negative comment on, on, on them at all. Nico Hines is great, one of the best players in the league. They're going to have a lot more experience. And I don't know if it'll be a kick up the ass for players like Dale Finucane to be like, look, you got Adam Finua Blake coming in. He's probably going to take your spot. You need to perform now. To, to stay in this team because you, you take up a lot of money. And if you're not performing, see you later because AFB is coming. So I think they'll be about the same. But, yeah, I can't stress that enough. That is not an indictment on the Cronulla Sharks. It'll be a great season again. It's all about September footy for them. Controversial. I think they'll drop somewhat. Ooh, I think okay. they'll finish maybe around 10th. Wow, you got the Sharks Ninth missing that. I, I have them missing the eight. I, I think... Stephen A. Good, sir. What's happening? <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think they're kind of flat track bullies a little bit. I think they beat up. They they that, they yeah. beat the teams that they should. Yeah, they can't beat anyone above them. And I think a lot of teams over the off season have got have gotten better than them. And I think that yeah. will that will. I think I think I think there are eight nine teams better than them. Hence why I have them finishing tenth. Okay, so, so we can I have them in the will drop somewhat. I have yeah. them in the will drop somewhat category. Yeah, yeah, and you know, just to your point there, that the other teams are getting better. I was just looking at this list. We've got, we've got seven teams in uh, will be better or sharp risers. So we've yeah. basically made up the top eight, and we haven't even gotten to like four of the best teams in the NRL, the top four from last year. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. So, so that, that that's my reason behind that. I think um, I think Nico Hines is is a good player. Yep. I just think we, especially last year, we saw patches where if he's not at his absolute best, if he's having oh, a bit of comments issues, that they struggle a lot. Yeah. Well, so you're I'm gonna just, hate. You're gonna hate my next take on the Knights. I'll, I'll don't. I'm probably in complete agreement with you. Okay. So let's just go on the Knights. Newcastle. Take it away. I'm gonna start. Newcastle fan loved what they did last season, but I think it was magic in a bottle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I don't think you can rely on Kalen Ponga having the greatest run a rugby league player has ever had. I know people might disagree with me on that, and there's probably, a, there's probably a little bit of bias. I acknowledge that, but I think he was so instrumental in what we did, and I think it's very hard to replicate that. I still think they'll be a good team, but I have them dropping somewhat, and I would not be surprised if they missed the top eight either. So I'm going to have the Knights uh, dropping somewhat. Well, if they miss the eight altogether, that's off the cliff. You can't go from fifth to 
out of the eight completely. Like you'd almost, as a Knights, like you almost made the top four. You almost got that second chance because you were that good. If you miss the eight, that's off the cliff. Well, well, in here, my opinion. Well, here's the thing: we weren't that good because we was one and a half games outside the top four, and yep. we had that awful start. Yes, I think I've written so many times that we were what. Um, God, we were five and eleven, or I think we, something I think terrible, or yeah. something something terrible yeah. like that, and just went again on a crazy good run. Mm. We can't rely on that every single time. We got to start better. We don't really start well as a team. I'm going to say we'll drop somewhat. I'm sticking with that. Seventh or eighth is probably okay. is probably yeah. the best we can hope for. Yeah, I agree. But yeah. I would not be surprised if we miss the top eight. Is what I'm, I, I'm to with you, and I, I don't want to be on the fence with this because I want to give an opinion for every team. But I wouldn't be surprised if the Knights finish seventh or eighth. I wouldn't be surprised if they finish tenth. Because Ponga, besides last season, like he's had a history of other injuries as well, right? So he could miss a lot of time. And like, I, I don't want to even put this out there because Caelan Ponga is such a great footballer to watch, but just one more head knock and you got to think like that's another couple of weeks off. And yep. that yeah, can, completely agree. That's, that that's every Knights yeah. fan's biggest fear. Like I just don't, I don't, want, I don't even want to talk about it because I feel bad. I don't want to wish like injuries upon players or anything, but yeah, I, I like them in that will drop somewhat category. Right, now we move on to the Warriors. Uh, the Warriors were the... With the feel good story of last year, alongside yeah. the Dolphins, I think uh, everybody. They took over the Dolphins. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So it was the latter part of the season when yeah. the Dolphins, yeah, we, yeah. we knew that that uh, bandwagon had, had fallen off a cliff, so to speak. Uh, the Warriors, uh, they finished fourth last season, made a prelim final, got smacked in that prelim final, unfortunately. Yeah. But I think there were a lot of good green shoots as well. I think everyone left that season feeling a great sense of optimism yeah. and hope. And I yeah. think the game has. We've heard so many people talk about it. the game's never been better yeah. in New Zealand. Yep. Uh, we saw sold out crowds for both the trial matches, which is awesome. In Christ um, yeah. yeah, just like just for trials Mental. as well. Mental, so, yeah. which which is great to see. I'm gonna go. We'll drop somewhat. Yeah. Yep. I I think top four, and I'm gonna use the same uh, argument I used for uh, the Sharks. Well, I think a couple teams have got them better than them. Up the Waz, and I just want to go back to that Dolphins. Warriors thing. So our, our group chat with my mates started off as uh, fins up, hashtag fins up, and then halfway through the season went into up the wires when that movement went on. So I, I, I love everything about the Warriors at the moment. Roger coming back. They've got about 62,000 halves ready to go. They've got a whole nation behind them. They've probably got Australia behind them as well. But it is going to be next to impossible to replicate that top four finish. I think just with the Rabbitohs and Roosters being that good, I think they'll probably occupy those two spots alongside Storm, Cronulla, million other teams, right? Warriors, I'll lock in a top eight spot and I'll give them a six, a fifth or six, and they're definitely going to be host. They'll be hosting a final game week one, final game in New Zealand. Everyone will go crazy. Warriors could mess around and win a premiership, in my opinion, if everything goes right. But oh, yeah. they'll drop a little bit. I, I definitely agree. Yeah, I like yeah. it. So both got will drop somewhat, but we still have them as a top eight team. Yes. Now the Storm. I'm 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 not sure on the Storm really. I think mm. they'll still be a top eight team. I don't see them being a. a proper contender yep. in, in that top eight. I just think, like, I know they've got lots of talent across the park, but I think they've sort of been figured out in a way. Yeah, I, I, I think point. it reminds me a lot of the Golden State Warriors, to use an NBA <laughs> yeah. analogy. I know you're a big NBA man. Yeah, yeah. I think we all still respect how good Steph Curry is, how good Clay Thompson is. Yeah. Draymond, yeah. Draymond Green, you can take it or leave it. I, I kind of like him just for how goofy he is. But yeah. I think that's what I see with the Storm. We've got really great players who've done a lot of really great things. Mm-hmm. But I think it's kind of on the way out, and yeah. I think them finishing third, I don't think, it is a true reflection of, of where they where they are personally. They do have Ryan Pappenhausen coming back yeah. this year. He, he's a great add-on, but I just think, again, I think teams have leapfrogged them. Yeah. I think they've been worked out. I, yep. I think they sort of just need to, I don't know, rege- uh, regenerate a little bit. Yep. They're still too good of a team. Any Craig Bellamy team will finish in the top eight, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. So I have them, again, around that maybe fifth to eighth region. Yeah. I don't see them missing the top eight, but I don't see them finishing top four. So I'm going to put them in the wool drop somewhat. Yeah, I'm in the wool drop somewhat as well. And I want to look at the camera for this one. Anyone saying the Melbourne Storm will not make the top eight, I've seen a lot of it. Like, seriously, go get, go get checked out because – you cannot be thinking straight or watch NRL and think the Storm are going to miss the top eight. They've got an they've got unbelievable talent. Cameron Munster on his day is the best player in the NRL. Jerome Hughes is one of the most underrated players in the NRL. Pappenhausen looks back to his best. And if he goes down, you've got Sewell Falongo, who's one of the most promising youngsters in the NRL as well. You've got Harry Grant, Dally M. Hooker of the Year. you got a decent forward pack that's got a year to learn. I mean, Tui Kamakamita has just grown into like this absolute monster of a forward. He's in the captaincy ranks now at Melbourne. So... Craig Bellamy probably got a year or two left in him. They'll they'll push. They'll have one more good run here. And 
I think it'll be between them and the Warriors to finish in that fifth, sixth range. So technically dropping, but I think it'll be somewhat of a, a similar season for the Storm. The Brisbane Broncos, um, heartbreak aside from last year's grand final, I think they're what a bit... What a shame. Yeah. What, mm, oh, my heart bleeds. We record this in the city studios at SCN 1170. Yeah. Uh, not SCNQ, but shout out to our brothers north of the border in SCNQ. I've got the Broncos winning the whole thing this year. Wow. I'm, I, yeah, like, I, I think they're scarily good. Yeah. I yeah. think that heartbreak will spur them a lot. I think even though they have lost star talent, I think we've seen with the Panthers that it doesn't really all come down to just two or three star yeah. players. I think it comes down to a system. And I think from what we've heard from every Broncos sycophant over over the, the off-season, over the summer, yeah. is that they've got some really young guys coming through that they've invested a lot of time in. Yeah. And they have a lot of faith in. I think Brennan Piakura is one of those. Yep. I know at the time of recording this, he's injured at the moment. He might not play in Vegas, but I think I know that Brandy's also got a high hopes for him. Thinks he'll be the most dominant second rower in the competition uh, by the end of the year, Brandy, possibly even a Dallium second row of the year. Brandy, so, Brandy. for that reason, I'm going Brisbane. Will be about the same. They'll be in that top two, I think. Listen, before I get into the Brisbane Broncos, I love Brandy. He's a great bloke. He's treated me great in my time here at SEN, working alongside him. Brandy's playing mind games, in my opinion. He's he's giving them a false sense of confidence, buying into their own hype. He's predicted Penrith as the premiers. Obviously, he's on the board. He's not going to go against his own team, but he's he's just he, he knows he knows Brisbane are a threat, and I think they are as well. I don't think they'll win the premiership, but he's just you know bringing them up. So they're going, oh geez, Brandy's saying this. Brandy's you know Brandy's an NRL legend. He's on the pa- Panthers board. He's a deputy chairman, and of- it's and it's not like Queensland has to get big heads, right? No, nah, no, they love the underdog status. Yeah, oh, we're yeah. the underdogs every year, even though we've won forty of the last hundred Origins mm. or whatever it is. Brisbane, I think, will be about the same. I think they'll pr- they might win the minor premiership. You know, that's that's great for them. But it all comes down to grand final day, and when you're going against a team that's won the last three, and the team that just like literally grabbed their hearts, ripped it out, ate it in front of them, spat it back on their face. Heartbreak's a hard thing to get over. Uh, they might make it might be the grand final rematch. I think the same thing is going to happen. Uh, so about the same in that sense, they could win the minor premiership. And finally, we've got to probably the easiest one. I think. I think we're both in agreement. Yeah, Penrith falling off a cliff. Falling off a cliff. No, no, no. <laughs> Sharp rises. Sharp rises. Uh, they won't lose a game in the regular season. No, uh, yeah. about the same. I I don't see them winning the minor premiership this year. I think that w- this will be the year that they finally start to. Dip, but again, that dip is one or two spots. Yeah, yeah. Right? They're still a top yeah. four team. They've still got the best player in the competition in Nathan Cleary. Yeah. As we're recording this, the World Club Challenge happened over the weekend. Yep. They got boned. I think they should have won it. I yeah. think some of the worst refereeing decisions I've ever seen in my time of watching the yeah. national, well, just rugby league yeah. in general. Uh, so whatever, rent that. They don't care about that. More so, they care about winning the premiership. And I yeah. think if there's any team that can win it four in a row. So. It's Penrith. I yeah. don't see them doing that, however, yeah. but uh, about the same. They'll yeah. they'll be there and thereabouts again. If they didn't lose Stephen Crichton, mm. I'd put him in will be better. I, I would agree with you. I, I think just, Stephen Crichton is a big loss, yeah. and that's why more so than all the other losses they've had. Oh, they've lost for the Army Kickout, or they've mm. lost Appy Corusau, and I yeah. say, oh, important players for sure. Yeah. Not downplaying anything. I think Stephen Crichton, like, as the years have progressed, has really become a star, and I think that's going to be a really big loss this season. Yeah. I think you saw that in the World Club Challenge as yeah. well, uh, that they were sort of just missing that, I don't know, just that hulking big center who yeah. just barged through yeah. and had those long strides as well, the intercept king as well. Yep. Um, so Penrith, I think, will be uh, around the same. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Um, I do think they're going to win the premiership, which is technically about the same, right? Yeah, exactly but, right. Um, look, we've, we've said that about Penrith every year. When they lose kick out, oh, that's, this is the one. Chorus, oh, this is the one. Matt Burton, this is the one. Stephen Crichton might be the one, but he's not going to affect their premiership chances, in my opinion. Your- no, I, no, I don't. If they, if it was Nathan Cleary, like yeah. for a hypothetical, if you lose your starting half, yeah, yeah, of course, like, yeah. like, like of course, that's something completely different. Three players that would do that to them: Fisher, Harris, Yo, and Cleary. Yes, they lose them three, you yep. can rule them out of premiership contention. As long as they got them three, and maybe like Liam Martin, Toho, they're always a chance. They're in contention, and Ivan Cleary as well. Uh, Penrith. I think, yeah, like I said, they're going to win the premiership, whether they win the minor premiership or not. I mean, they surprised everyone last year. No one thought they were going to win it last year. And mm. they just they just win and win, and they know how to win. They know how to get it done. Uh, that's why I really wanted to put them in will be better because we see Nathan Cleary in the final series last year look like the greatest player of our generation since Jonathan Thurston, Cameron Smith, right? 
but I think just that Crichton loss might just be a little factor, um, which will see them around the same one to two winning the premiership in my opinion. Nice. Dom, thank you very much. Uh, do you agree? Do you disagree with our opinions? If you're an Eels fan, nice I'm nice. sure you completely disagree with everything I said. Yeah, but hey, 100%. Yeah. Let us know. Yeah. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. Love to hear your list as well. Your yeah. your top eight. Your complete ladder if you want. Uh, who have you got as the biggest riser? Uh, or who's going to fall off a cliff? Yeah. Uh, why out, is it the Raiders? Shout out to the comments last time. It was really positive. That, like, I, I, that made me really feel good when I read the comments in our last video. So we're doing like a face reveal this time. We're gonna get we're gonna get hammered, but yep. it's worth it in my opinion. Worth it. Yeah. SN League, Dom, Charles Peace out. out.